Wizard! What you got there? No. Oh what do you think I got? Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to Movies Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and I am deeply, madly in love with this car behind me here. I want to sit on the piano and just serenade it. It is a 1987 Buick Grand National. I bought it at the Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auction in Scottsdale, got a great price on it, and it turned out to be a very nice car from what I can tell. It drives fantastically and it is extremely powerful. In my last video, I lined it up against my Lamborghini Countach in a drag race, which this thing smoked, which it rightfully should have. It did it in 1987 and it still does it today. Thanks to that 3.8 liter V6 under the hood with a giant turbocharger and intercooler, but I haven't had it looked at by the car wizard yet to see if it has any issues. It is over 30 years old after all. So we are going to do that today. We're going to drive this thing up to the car wizard and hopefully he is as deeply and madly in love with it as I am uh, just with the car, not at the bill that he is going to get. But before we do that, I'd like to thank Bumper.com for sponsoring this video. Tyler Hoover here from Hoobies Garage, and I know my content is typically a roadmap of what not to do when buying or selling a car, but thanks to Bumper.com for sponsoring today's video, I can share the knowledge and the tools to help prevent you from making the same mistakes. Bumper.com is an all new game changer of a website to help people buy, sell, and monitor a vehicle. And it offers a way more affordable option when it comes to services that you are probably already familiar with and a few you probably didn't know you needed all in one place. And today I'll show you how it all works using a few of my cars. Their services include comprehensive multi-data source compiled vehicle history reports that you can search using a license plate or VIN, helping you avoid cars that have previously been on fire, repossessed after not having an oil change for 60,000 miles, or spent 10 years in Russia with its odometer rolled back several times so you don't make the same mistakes I've made over the years. And unlike other history report services that charge a ridiculous price, Bumper.com has affordable vehicle history reports with a basic membership. But that's far from the end of resources Bumper.com offers. When it comes to shopping, Bumper.com compiles inventory from over 50,000 dealerships and private sellers from all over the country and uses this data to provide a vehicle market value tool to ensure you don't pay too much for your next purchase. So whether you are shopping for a car for yourself or looking into approximately where to price a car you want to sell, Bumper.com's price estimator will come in very handy. And once you find the vehicle you want, Bumper.com has a vehicle self-inspection helper with a checklist of items to watch out for before before you part with your hard-earned money. Once you've purchased a vehicle or already own one, Bumper.com continues to have you covered with online title services in select states and the ability to monitor real-time data if your car is Wi-Fi enabled. You'll get suggested maintenance reminders, monitor tire pressures, track mileage, and much more with Bumper Connect. They also have access to multiple partners through their Bumper Rewards, giving you deals and discounts for products and services. So as you can see, Bumper.com offers a lot more than other websites and for a lot less with a very affordable monthly membership. Visit Bumper.com slash Hoobies and make smart purchase decisions. Don't be the dumbest car purchaser in the world like me. Well, the wizard's driving the juke today. Wizard! What you got there? No. Oh what do you think I got? Oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> curl in pain. That's a long door. Oh. You just had your uh, life changing procedure, too. <laughs> We're filming another bit, and instead I make a real bit happen. Oh. oh. You gonna make it? Yeah. You feel okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, back to... What, what were you doing over there, wizard? Oh. It's, none of, it's none of your business. Don't worry about it. I'm okay. more worried about you, actually. <laughs> yeah? Oh, you're gonna uh, have some bruising or so something. What's it? Yeah, it's already bruised. What's in there? Uh, just some, some personal lubrication products. But, uh, 
That's no, no concern. Don't worry okay. about that. <laughs> Personal. Okay. So now we're back on track to whatever bit we were doing here before I racked myself. Okay. 3M. Emblem adhesive? Yeah. That's what you use personally? No. For what? <laughs> quick seal ultra? Yeah. Well. You might need some quick seal I, uh, soon. Yeah, I might have busted a stitch. Um, yeah, look at this, a 1987 uh, Buick Grand National. Yeah. You actually had one of these, but it wasn't a real one. It wasn't, it was a Rigi Gold Turbo that somebody made look like a Grand National. I had years ago, just briefly on the car show, uh, that was ruined. I mean, it didn't run right. This one runs beautifully, and it is the real deal. It is the real, it looks like the real deal. Yeah. It looks very nice, too. Yeah, so there is a little bit of a mission for you. Um, so the reason why I got this thing so cheap is it said, well, it's from Canada originally, which kind of hurts things a little bit when they're in the U.S., but uh, mm -hmm. also it said on the Carfax that it had over $10,000 worth of accident damage at one point. Oh. And it has been repainted, but I've been looking all around this thing, and I don't see anything showing that it's been seriously hit. Okay. But I'd love for you to drive it. Oh, you want me to drive I it? I think you're going to love this thing. I'll try not to hit myself in the car. Yeah, the, the doors are long. That was... Jesus. Looks like an old Buick from here, doesn't it? Looks like a Regal. With the exception of that there. Mm-hmm, a digital, well, it's not really digital, it's like LED lights. Yes, pretty cool RPM and boost gauge. But no gauges, like no temperature, coolant temperature, oil pressure, any of that kind of stuff. They just want you to know how fast you're going and how much gas you got, basically. Yeah, this is the era of idiot lights along the sides here. Mm -hmm. This definitely runs a lot better than the old one. <laughs> well, I barely remember the old one, honestly. The other one barely yeah. idled. Right. Yeah. Oh. You might need an ice pack soon. Oh, a bag of peas again. Again. I can't believe I did that. I wanted to get to what you were having in the bag quickly and did not navigate the door well. <laughs> well we're on a road in Mexico in the middle of nowhere. Oh, there you go. Oh, holy crap, I No. Well, it's kilometers. kilometers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just got oh, it up to 55. Oh, this is a Canadian car, you're uh -huh. right. Yep. I thought we were doing 100 already. <laughs> no. Oh. No, this isn't Dominic Toretto's Grand National. This is this is a normal one. I do think it's been turned up a little bit though. Um, I put 91 octane gas and it's slowed down a little bit, it's starting to ping really high because I think it boosts way more than it used to stock. So I'm curious if there's been any changes or anything after market to it, which I guess we can look at when we look over. But otherwise, I mean, I really don't have any complaints. The sunroof or T-tops, they rattle a little bit, they leak a little bit, but that's sort of a characteristic. Yeah. We'll do a, a rolling start here on okay. this Mexican road. Okay. Boost into it. Definitely does not mess around. 15 pounds of boost, it says. Yeah. It stops at 85. That's definitely the 80s. <laughs> right. But this is definitely our kind of car right here. It's so comfortable. It's like I'm in an old Regal. Yes, smooth, comfy cruiser, but it looks really sinister. That Darth Vader look. Mm -hmm. uh, very fast, but still this old school land yacht thing that we love. So it's it's the perfect car, really. It is. Time. Yeah, I can hear the pinging you're talking about. It didn't do that with 93 octane, which I guess is what this car needs. Yeah, it needs some higher octane. But I'm curious if you find any real issues. I'm, I'm curious if there's any evidence of accident damage. And it seems really well sorted. So I don't know if you're buying a yacht or a nice watch or even, you know, a pizza maybe with this one. Yeah, probably a pizza. Under light acceleration, it feels like it could use some plugs or something's going on. I feel some stumbling a little bit. Not just from fuel? No, I don't think it's fuel. It may need some new plugs, like a tune-up or whatever. Okay. I didn't really notice, but I am not the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last oil change, supposedly 2015. Man, that's kind of like the Methorati. 
Well, it's not 60,000 miles. It's barely been driven. Okay. Not even 2,000 kilometers since then. Mm -hmm. But let's see what else. Watch out for the door. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes. So what's new in Wizardland? Well, I'm doing some work on my FJ. I've got some new trim pieces. The old ones were faded. Yeah? Kind of just kind of like the XLR. I'm going overboard on it. As, well, you're not going to tear the motor out and swap it with another. <laughs> that no. was That's crazy. But uh, I see my Cadillac's on the lift, huh? Yep. I'll actually raise it up. We have a new transmission pan on there. Yeah. 49 Cadillac with a bunch of modern Cadillac and Oldsmobile stuff, kind of a resto mod, mm -hmm. uh, which made it sort of a hodgepodge. But the big leak was the... Tra Ooh, that's pretty. The trans... Yep, a nice chrome one. That's got a little bit of drip there because we haven't serve it or done anything with it yet. It's not actually probably not even tight. Oh, yep. It's just sitting on there for now. The old one's actually on that cart. Mm -hmm. It's just from years and years of being clamped down and on and off. It's kind of warped. Oh. It doesn't seal very well anymore. Okay. So that's why I have a new shiny one. Yep. That Very nice. That. And we have the drive shaft out. They actually have a pinhole, which is also on the car. Huh? Which is common on the back side. It's like a little freeze plug. Mm -hmm. And it leaks transmission fluid goes through here and comes out. So we got it sealed off with some silicone. The it's silicone that you put in your the car? Personal lubricant product. Uh, that's, that's not yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that takes care of those leaks. And my steering gearbox was another one, right? Yeah, I got that on order. All right. And also the float for your uh, tank. Uh, the Maybaca. You've been waiting for parts, right? Yeah, they just arrived. We have a transmission filter gasket kit. And also, a similar to those NAG transmissions, it has the, the connector starts leaking. Right. The socket. Saw, saw that in the last video. So here's the new part. So the connector. For the electronics here yep there's a little seal in there that starts leaking eventually it shorts out the transmission itself mm -hmm. fries the conductor plate and then you only have one gear very common thing but uh yeah nice to service it anyway the sealed for life transmission mm -hmm. and the uh audi that's not mine is still oh man waiting on the cylinder head to come back from rebuild and then you've had some more excitement with the shelby right yeah, we've got some roller tip rockers order that's going to, we're just going to go ahead and replace all of them so they all match. Okay. And push rods and everything, and that'll get it back going again for you. We did try just the basic push rods that are supposed to go in here. They didn't even hold up the long at all. So that was a new rocker arm that just... Just broke in half. So it's got really strong springs there? Is there that what be, it is? There must be some serious springs going on there, yeah. Huh. Okay. So you need something, a rocker arm with some oomph. Some oomph. These will have roller tips. It'll help out a little bit. And they're really strong, so it's kind of expensive. But as soon okay. as those show up, we can get that all back together and you'll have a running car again. All right, fingers crossed. And then the Ferrari wheel. At some point, this will all get torn down because of a bad head gasket, yeah? Yeah, the engine pulled. The engine pulled. Yes, to check to make sure all everything is uh, yeah, torqued down properly. Mm -hmm. And the Citroen... You've uh, you've got it all tore apart. Yeah. Speaking of uh, impacting your balls, uh huh. This one has new balls. <laughs> okay. Thanks for reminding me of that incident. Okay. There's a new. So there's a new accumulator balls. All yeah, right. New cylinders, new balls have gone on. We still have quite a bit of work to do, but there's a there's the old balls. The old balls are out. Are you pretty good at juggling balls? Uh, no, I'm not. I don't think I want to try. How much do they weigh? Yeah. Get hit in the head with that, it might. Five pounds, yeah, or somewhere else. Yeah, well, <laughs> interesting. Because it's front-wheel drive, yeah. so it just, the drive shaft or whatever you would call it, the CV axles, but the axles just this. sort of hang out inside the hub, huh? Yep, and there's your suspension right there, the actual cylinder. Oh, where we couldn't find it earlier because it was behind the, yeah. the liners. Interesting. Okay. The CV shafts are, where are those at, Daniel? Uh, in the park washer. Oh, let's go look in the park washer. Yeah. Then our friend Leo's Mercy Lago. Yep. It's a manual one, right? Yes, 03 manual. Yeah, he bought it just in time. I think in the hundreds before they went crazy. Yeah, 180, geez. <laughs> before Ed Bullion blew that up. We got a bunch of uh, leather being redone, and we're doing speakers and some other small things. Yeah, I sold mine. 
So inside the parts washer is... Yes, CV shafts. Oh yeah. Those are some strange CV shafts. Very French, very weird. Mm -hmm. Well, you ready to look <laughs> at some uh, Buick? Yep, let's take a look at it. Oh yeah. Are you a Daryl Waltrip fan, wizard? I really don't get into that kind of racing and stuff. I boogity, boogity, boogity. Boogity, I don't even know. No. Oh, well. I'm a letdown in, in the uh, the manly man world of racing. Oh, I see. Well, 87 is the best year of the Grand National. Mm -hmm. uh, it was named after the Grand National Series of NASCAR. Daryl Waltrip mm -hmm. won in 1981 with the new body Regal like this. And 1987 is the culmination of all of it. It's the best performing one of the bunch, thanks to that intercooler down there. Mm -hmm. And a gigantic turbo. Yes. Well, I can see that obviously it doesn't have a distributor. It has coil packs. Yup. So we could have either bad plugs or even a bad wire or bad coil packs. It looks like it's all one piece, too. Mm hmm. So we'll have to do some testing and figure out which of those three it is. It looks clean up here, though. It does look really clean. And for being a Canada car, it's not rusty at all at least from the top does the cruise work i didn't even try it i think the cruise works yeah well that's good mm -hmm. many of those of that era are dead by now Isn't yeah that cool buick turbocharged it is very cool but the other thing i don't see anywhere where this car was hit seriously according to the canadian carfax no it doesn't even seem like the bolts have ever been turned on this stuff I guess we can look underneath and see what we see. Like you said, you can tell it's been repainted. Right. But. I wonder if it got scratched or a tree fell on it or something and they just prompted a repaint. It could have been down the side? Or yeah. Did, did they say where it happened? No. Mm -mm. Hmm. Well, let's put it up in the air. Dun, 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 dun. It just looks so sinister up there. It does. Now, the grill's got to remind you of Darth Vader, doesn't it? You're a Star Wars fan. Mm -hmm, it does. It's so neat. And then the special scoop here to get to the intercooler. This keeps squirrels and things from getting in there. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't want a squirrel in there. Uh, let's see if we can see anything that's been broken up here. Or... No, the frame looks nice. Yeah. I don't see anything major replaced or, I don't know, I don't see anything there anyway. Everything's dry there. Yeah. Radiator area is dry. Brakes are good. Steering, tight? Nice and tight steering. How about that? Shocks are dry. Looks like original shocks. Dayton, Ohio. Whoa. The original shocks are still riding as good as they are. Mm -hmm. That's pretty impressive. It is. The starter's a little wet, but I don't see anything around it where it could be coming from. Well, there's no fluid in a starter, so what would it be? It could be the, the rear main seal, but I don't see anything coming like out of this drip hole. It's right. Dry. I don't know. It's not that bad, though. No. It's kind of just built up goo. Oh, I can see. You can see straight up the valve cover gaskets. Oh, okay. On both sides. That's what's leaking. All right. Here's our metric hydromatic. Nice and dry. Yeah, and I noticed that the engine's mounted pretty far back, being a V6. Yeah. That it, it's it almost a mid-engine. It is. Kind of like the Mustang SVOs with the four-cylinder turbo, where they're able to mount them further back for better weight distribution. So. Mm -hmm. Similar story here. All right. Seems like it's recently had a transmission service. This gasket looks fairly new. Yeah, and it was gooing things behind it, huh? Yeah. Looks but, like they took care of it, but they didn't clean it up very good. Okay. Got our dual exhaust going out the back from a single. Everything, everything seems okay on the U-joint. Yeah. This is a very common GM thing well, here. It actually has a aftermarket driveline or at least a rebuilt one it says pat's driveline pat pat yep pat's driveline well, something must have went wrong with the other drive shaft or 
Here's some information here. Pat's drive line and some part numbers. Yeah. 130, 146. Yep, September of 21 is what it says on there. So recently. All right. This is fairly common on the, the General Motors axles, the welds. They leak a little oil on the sides. Yeah, but it's not anything that's really dripping. No. In the back, it's, well, a little more surface rust showing than the front. I guess it is It is a Canada car after all. So that tells me it's probably, they did a good job, but the front has been where is where the collision is because it's all shiny black paint. You think so? Yep, then this, this is what I would expect to see. See, and I noticed with rustier cars, you know, it's always rustier in the back than it is in the front just because that's how things collect. Yeah. But, uh... I mean, everything, even up in here, is kind of rusty. Yeah. And then, well, I mean, you look at the lower control arm, it's... Yeah. But then, look, if you look up in here, this is all shiny, brand-new-looking paint. And your brake drums are nice and dry, so that's good. Is that fuel? Nope, just water. Oh, just going through a puddle. Mm-hmm. Great. No serious issues. No. You want to maybe do a tune-up. Yeah, to help with the kind of the hesitation it has under a partial load. Valve cover gaskets. Mm-hmm. I could put shocks on it, but it is riding really nice. I wouldn't even mess with the shocks. Yeah, so a few hundred dollars worth of stuff. So it looks like I'm going to get a pizza out of the deal. Pizza out of the Grand National. Well, I needed a bit of good news after other things that have happened recently and then the door racking me so i'm happy yeah that's great yeah i'm, I'm actually happy for you. you got a good one i think you got a really good one still gonna have a little bit of that in-store credit left thank you so much for watching